I'm Joanne Harris and I'm going to read a little from my new book, The Strawberry Thief. It's right at the beginning of the book and it's another story about Vian and Anouk and their adventures in Lascaine Soutane. Chapter 1. Friday, March the 10th. There's always a moment before a storm when the wind seems to change its mind. It plays at domesticity. It flirts with the blossom on the trees. It teases the rain from the dull grey clouds. This moment of playfulness is when the wind is at its cruelest and most dangerous. Not later when the trees fall and the blossom is just blotting paper choking the drains and rivulets. Not when houses fall like cards and walls that you thought were firm and secure are torn away like paper. No, the cruelest moment is always the one in which you think you might be safe. That maybe the wind has moved on at last. That maybe you can start building again, something that can't be blown away. That's the moment at which the wind is at its most insidious. That's the moment where grief begins. The moment of expected joy. The demon of hope in Pandora's box. The moment when the cacao bean releases its scent into the air. A scent of burning and spices and salt and blood and vanilla and heartache. I used to think it was simple, that art. The making of harmless indulgences. But at last I have come to learn that no indulgence is harmless. Francis Renaud would be proud of me. Forty years a witch, and now at last I have become a Puritan. Zosie de Lamba would have understood. Zosie, the collector of hearts. Whose face still comes to me in my dreams. Sometimes I hear her voice on the wind, the sound of her shoes on the cobbles. Sometimes I wonder where she is, whether she still thinks of me. No indulgence is harmless, she knew. Power is all that counts in the end. The wind doesn't care. The wind doesn't judge. The wind will take whatever it can, whatever it needs, instinctively. I was like that once, you know, seeds on the wind, taking root, seeding again before moving on. The seeds do not stay with the parent plant. They go wherever the wind goes. Take my Anouk, now twenty-one, gone to wherever children go whenever they follow the piper. We used to be so close, she and I. We used to be inseparable. And yet I know that a child is on loan, one day to be returned to the world, to grow and to learn and to fall in love. I'd once believed she might stay here in Lanskenay Soutan, that Jeanne Oudreau might keep her here. That, of course, and the chocolaterie and the promise of security. But it was Jean-Loup Rimbaud in Paris who decided things. Jean-Loup, the boy with the hole in his heart. Did Anouk fill it? All I know is she left a hole in mine. A hole that all the chocolate in Mexico could never fill. A space in the shape of a little girl with eyes as dark as the ocean. And now my Rosette, 16 years old, hears the voice of the wind. And I know how hungry she is, how wild. How willful, how volatile. The wind would take her in one gust if she were not fastened down like a sail, if I had not taken precautions. And still the wind keeps worrying at the cords that keep us safe. Still we hear its siren call. And it smells of other places. It speaks of danger and sunlight, adventure and joy. It dances through the motes of light in shades of chilli and peppercorn. It catches at the back of the throat like unexpected laughter. And in the end it takes them all. Everything you've laboured for. Everything you told yourself that you could somehow take with you. And it always begins in a moment of playfulness, magic, even of joy. A moment of brightness between the clouds. A 
taste of sweetness, a ringing of bells, sometimes even a fall of snow. <laughs>